I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Trista Wren is our guest tonight. Trista is the bachelorette. Trista, well, welcome to the show. Thank you. I never say that either. Do I, Drew? <laughs> Do you? I, I've never heard those words come out of your mouth. I don't know. No. I'm glad it's for me. I was at the dentist today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't worry, Chris. It's got to always come back to him. Oh, yeah. yeah. So no, here we go. We'll get into it. No, no, no. no. That's all good. This, I want to hear about your story. Yeah. This was big. This is big. Big screw. Big screw in the jaw. Oh, you got oh. The, the implant. Got today. the implant, which I always pictured as sort of a toothpick like post that they were going to build a tooth mm -hmm. onto. It's uh, it's 10 millimeters by 6 millimeters, and uh, for those of you who don't know the conversion, 6 millimeters, almost quarter of an inch thick. Yeah. That's uh, ah. it's like in a, your bone. No, number two pencil. Pencil, pencil thickness in the bone. I frank, frankly you, didn't know I had that much room in the jaw. Were you under? No, no, no. Nitrous? Yeah. Oh, you have a bad trip again. You no, trip. no. I, listen, I, I got to dedicate tomorrow's show to this. Okay. <laughs> we got to talk to Trista tonight. But, uh, yeah, it was bad times. Bad times. Because uh, let me tell you. all. Did you cry? Oh, no. No, but <laughs> what I always do is I, I, I sweat. Either. I sweat profusely oh, because yeah. you you know you're numbed up, right? But in in a certain sense, you're still sort of an animal, and you're awake. I'm lucid. I know exactly what's going on. And the guy's putting a quarter inch drill bit into oh, my jawbone, my. and you spend uh, one hour in a sort of position where your body your body thinks it's being just brutally raped yeah. for an hour. Like yeah. your body has really no idea. Like hey, you're being like drilled. Your, your brain is going. Well, I can't feel this, but uh, it really sounds bad. Quarter exactly. inch bit going into the jaw. <laughs> this can't be good. And I it literally I, I peel myself off the vinyl. Yeah, the sweat. My, I'm sitting in a puddle of my own sweat. Was, oh, oh, you know what they should do is myself. give you headphones and play music or something while yeah. you're so you <laughs> can't hear that, the he drill. That but, but let me explain. Really? Well, no, I did. Yeah, but let me explain something. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> You know when they uh, when you know they have these deaf high schools and colleges uh -huh. and stuff, and then they have the uh, football team, yeah. and the way they know what the snap count is because obviously they can't hear the quarterback. Right. Is they got a guy with a big bass drum, and he sits on the no sideline. Way. Yeah. And he goes ba boom, and everyone goes because they can feel wow. they can Vibration. feel it. So even deaf people can hear. They think, well, the drill bit into the jaw, oh. when you have uh, Manhattan Transfer playing in the <laughs> playing in the Walkman. <laughs> Drill bit in the jaw trumps Walkman. <laughs> it's like, nope, still feel the piece of metal that's actually going into the bone. And the as I recall, bone. last time we had Manhattan Trash for playing, it was a Christmas music. It was music. a Christmas yeah. music, <laughs> and I was just covered my own sweat, <laughs> sucking, sucking a... Uh, Sucking a solution of uh, my own, uh, my spit, a little vomit, oh, some tears, that, and yeah. blood out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm here, chest. No, it's roasted on an open fire. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I, I got, but tomorrow. Tomorrow, I did, do we have we'll a show. guest tomorrow? Because uh, I got to dedicate the entire show love to for this. Dentistry. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> the uh, Bachelorette, I think I have, uh, mm -hmm. I think I've watched almost every episode. Cool. There's, uh, it's, uh, it works. It, it sort of worked uh, both ways. I mean, The Bachelor worked, and The Bachelorette sort of worked, uh, mm -hmm. too. And But let's just go back so we can get everyone sped up, because uh, Drew, maybe you don't follow these things like uh, like I do. He's busy. Tr Trista was... <laughs> I've seen a couple episodes, though. Trista made, uh, was down to Trista and one other girl on The First Bachelor. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and you felt pretty conf. Did you feel confident yeah. at that point? Well, he told me I was basically going to be picked two days before he did. The he picking. did? Yeah. He said, oh, I, it's you. I said, if you had to pick right now, who would you pick? And he said, I would pick you. Bad and question. then 48 hours later, he picked, changed his mind. And and uh, I, I think most then, I know you can't agree with this because modesty prevents you from doing it, but I think most of uh, the fellas watching were a bigger fan of yours than they were of What's Her Nose, who we ended up picking. What's Her Nose. But did, are they still together? No. They just broke up. They just broke up. Shocking. Yeah. Shocking. Right. So uh, so now you don't make the cut. I mean, you, you barely miss the cut, but you get a lot of exposure. You have a decent experience. You, yeah. Were you in love? Uh, what's no, his name? No, I wasn't in love. What was Alex. Alex. 
Alex is sort of a seemed like a, a nice looking guy that people thought was gay but couldn't quite mm -hmm. figure out his sexual proclivity mm -hmm. a little bit of a mom's boy like a little too perfect seemed to be seemed to have it all going for him but right. seemed to be missing a personality or missing a soul I or something I got along so well with him during the show and now Do you want looking gay, back gay, a lot of gay friends no I don't mm -hmm. um but now looking nothing against them I just don't have any right. um but now looking back, I if I would have ended up with him, we we wouldn't have made it past a month. What, I know that for sure. Was he? Uh, I mean, was my assessment of him that he was sort of had everything going for him, but he didn't did. seem to have much of a like a dish that looked real good, but had no seasoning. He did in it. have a really good personality, which you guys didn't see a lot on the show, because for every hour there is, there's six hours of footage, so yeah. Yeah. you don't see a lot of what goes on on the dates. So he did he did have a really good personality, but um, we just weren't a match and i just got caught up in it i think all right so that but that worked out then ultimately oh, yeah. for you oh yeah all right so now you finish that you're 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 heartbroken mm -hmm. then then uh then america is heartbroken for you we want to pick up the pieces you got a, <laughs> all these screwballs living in their parents uh, right basements in minnesota mm -hmm. sending me letters drinking. i still get them most of them were out here behind yeah the exactly <laughs> right now they're all sitting on my car yeah but they're all and i, I love that about guys too like the guy you don't the guy who you miss out on is some strapping good looking you know playboy with a pilot's license and uh, you know broad <laughs> shoulders and narrow at the hip and other and this guy's uh, drinking cider out of a jug in his on a f folks farm he's like yeah I'll marry you just don't worry yeah I, I, it's so it, it it's it amazes me what guys are capable of and it's as if you're just looking for any guy to get married right, to exactly. immediately it right. doesn't matter because we are we were all desperate to go on the show and That's what we were pinned as, which right. I was, and I just did it for fun. So, so now, uh, some time goes by, and ABC gets hold of you with this idea, or is it almost immediately? It was pretty much immediately after the the airing, but it was the exec producers' ideas, and then they went to the powers that be at ABC and Telepictures and tried to get them on board. And, and what was your first response to the idea? Oh, I loved it. I said, sign me up immediately. Oh, really? Yeah, because I had so much fun on the first one, and I knew that I'd get to do all the great things that I got to do on the first show. But um, they were now handpicking, basically, 25 guys for me, going searching the country, and they would be blood tested and psychologically analyzed and all of these things. I mean, drug tested and everything. So where else could you find a greater dating pool than that. <laughs> yeah, well, they're... <laughs> and safer. I, I'll tell you, it is a... I, I'm amazed at how many guys look good in their underpants in this. <laughs> I, I mean, just from watching these shows. They found great-looking guys. I, I know. Every, every guy looked great. Yeah. Like, I mean, really, like... Could have been a model kind of guys, although they were always seemed to be up to something else other than modeling. <laughs> but, I mean, which is, I guess, a good thing. But a bunch of good-looking guys. Mm -hmm. And then they had the one chubby guy with the sense of humor which of course you know he's so great i yeah. love bob but bob got bob got cut on like the middle somewhere around he made From, like made to the eight yeah to eight when yeah. i had eight around now what now what about that is a is a uh, female like a guy yeah. well i mean women women usually have a little more leeway this way if the guy's got a couple extra pounds on him he's got a good sense of humor great sense of humor it really wasn't about that and um well, why'd you cut poor But, Bob? you know, it's it's funny because people will bring that up. Why did you cut the fat guy is what they used to call him, which he's he's not a fat guy. He's just... No. Compared to the other guys. Yeah, compared to yeah. the other guys, he's still a little... He has a little extra poundage. So, um, they they ask, why did I get rid of him? When Why don't they ask, why did I get rid of Jamie, who's the great-looking basketball player? Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're pinning it on me that I'm just getting rid of the fat guy when I got rid of the dreamboat right. also. Yeah, well, why did you get rid of the dream? <laughs> um, he suffers from panic attacks, but that's not why. Uh oh No, no. Drew has those ones. Going. I know. Well, no, he, he suffers from them, but that's not... Everyone thought that, that was, that's what it was all about. He actually has very high insecurities in himself, severe oh, insecurities. Yeah. Women hate he was. We went Which on a spa date. The t tall, blonde, great teeth, like bright smile guy. Mm. Um, he's a basketball player. Um, anyway... He, we went on spot eight. He got all nervous about taking his shirt off in front of all these other guys. And I don't know if you saw, but he's got a perfect body. 
Yeah, I beat off to it twice. <laughs> but here's the guy, the guy. Other guys ought to be taking note here. Here's Trista's. You know, this is how women measure this stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. It's like it's like what you do, your your sense of yourself and your confidence and your sense your confidence. of prowess and, and uh, ability to be you know a safe harbor and a protector yeah. and this stuff. Completely. That's yeah. what I look for. Well, also women get caught up in this sort of atmosphere of guys. If a guy's feeling confident and marching a certain direction, they'll follow, follow. along. Yeah, and if he's slumped over and uh, crying himself to sleep, then... Th I don't want anything to do with it. That's right. That's yeah. the way guys are. Exactly opposite of men. At the men. beginning. At the beginning. Exact opposite of men. Yeah. Though, right? Men, on the other hand, want the weakened, broken right. problem. That's when they pounce. Totally. Yeah, well, well we don't that's care. Strange. It's really about but looks, that's when you know? I know, but that's when they look for their opportunities. <laughs> so sad. Yeah. All right, so now, now who's left now? Because I, I missed Ryan last and week. The, uh, which one is the poetry guy? Ryan. Ryan. The guitar player. Yeah. No, that's Greg. Greg. He's gone. True. Or the poetry guy, please. He plays, he uh, paints and writes poetry, but he also is a firefighter. And played football. He's now, gay. Now, Drew, please. All that, <laughs> but you, you guys love that yin and yang stuff. You love the scrappy, brawny guy, the guy who can handle himself. And I like manly men, and masculine he, men. And then he writes, he writes some bad poetry. On it's the not side. bad poetry. Yeah, everyone in my office makes fun of this guy. <laughs> by the way, everyone at Jimmy Kimmel Live, so we're laughing our asses off about the poetry. Well, I've Women always looked for a romantic. Up. Right. And he's a romantic. He's romantic. Sure. Whatever that means. Totally right. is, too. So, so we're going to find out on uh, Wednesday who you picked. You obviously uh, know already. And what... what? Uh, now, by the way, if you t if you just blurted it out right now, it would cost you $5 Five million. million? Five million? Yeah. Were you oh. just throwing that out? You yeah, it know? was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, five million. You know ABC. Yeah. <laughs> One million didn't sound like enough. No. And Ten million no. didn't sound like you could pay. Yeah. I couldn't pay five million. Make, I couldn't pay one million. Make a hundred kajillion dollars. <laughs> right. And, so it's five five million bucks they yeah. would they would sue you for if mm -hmm. you uh, if you shouted this out. And then and then now is I now was the idea that you have it's the whole marriage thing. I mean that it's wasn't a possible, pushed. No. But the marriage on the bachelor on the bachelor that you were on uh -huh. it was stressed quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, I think that... This doesn't seem to be stressed as much on The Bachelorette. I don't know. I think maybe just because it was the first show, it, maybe it was stressed more. Maybe it seems like it was stressed mm -hmm. more because it, the, that show had never been on the air the before. Con the concept has evolved a little right. bit. Right. So. Or, or, or devolved. I mean, it's, 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 what it is is it's not as ambitious. It's not right. like at the end of right. this... They get married. No, but they still, they still say that. They do. The show. I, yeah. I'm going to go around But again. do you get married? Well, there's a possible engagement. There's no marriage at the end. Did you get engaged? I can't say uh, that. I want to go around. Uh, no rings here. Huh? I want to go around again about things. Uh, there's another guy that was anxious that I saw you getting ready to dump. The, the, the guy that was opposite the guitar playing guy. Russ. Is the he, third guy? Right? Is that what he means? I don't know. But it's interesting how, how these guys, when they're nervous, and you just like... I don't it like... Doesn't, it doesn't read... I mean, I look for I a guy that. who's very confident because I've been in a relationship with a guy who's very insecure, uh -huh. and it was just very draining. Jealous? No. And he was very jealous and controlling. Well, um, wouldn't, wouldn't you say a guy who farts in front of you is a confident man? Yes, yes. definitely. You see, you want, that, that's what <laughs> I'm Adam, saying. Do you want to light it tonight? You're wearing the right pants. You could do it. Uh, I'm Inside, I'm sure it. you should be impressed. You should see the plume of, of, of flame that he's able to produce. I'm acceptable. I'm just saying that, Hey, listen, oh, you, shut you, up, been, right, listen, you, You've been met up. <laughs> Trista's blonde. Her's having a hard time tonight. She is your speed. Yes, Drew? She looks like your wife a little bit. A little bit? She yeah. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Drew likes that. Drew likes that. Whoa, whoa. Drew likes what you got. That's all I'm saying. Drew has, has a type, right, Drew? Don't yeah, we all? Wife. Physical type. Yep. We all yep, do, absolutely. don't we? Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. I'm a little more flexible than Drew. Hmm. You'll arrange your... Drew, Drew, likes, Drew likes a blonde. Adam, it's Adrian Barbeau. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like... Uh, but I'll take a blonde, too. But you are Drew's type. And that's, you know, it's a compliment. Thank you. Yeah. This wife's going to kill you. <laughs> Cassie? <laughs> yeah. I'll take it as a yeah. compliment. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask this real fast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now, we always talk about how a woman doesn't like a man who stutters or hiccups or s doesn't seem self-assured. Mm -hmm. But isn't that sort of connected to the fact that when when a guy's insecure and he's stuttering and stammering, it means he likes them a little too much. And when the guy seems sort of confident, confident and self-assured, it poses a challenge to the women. Quite down over there, Drew. I'll let her you know, 
I mean, when when a guy's like running around trying to please you, it's different for you than when a guy says, eh, "I'm it doing my thing." It is in the thing. beginning. In the beginning, I'm yeah. just not attracted to that at all. And I, it might have to do with the challenge aspect, but I think it also has to do with my past relationships, where I know that it wasn't it wasn't working for me. I just so it was so if a guy draining. If, if we went out on a first date and and I said, and I said, uh, well, well, what do you want to do? And you oh, said, I and you cannot said, stand yeah, that. I don't That's know. one of and my like, biggest pet peeves. Just tell me what you want to do. Now, you'd like it much better if I if I said, "Listen, I got a great, I got a great. I'll pick you up." I got at eight. everything That's planned. You, you know. don't have to think about it. Yes, That's right. completely. I love That's that. That's right. And then love I that. started working in a picnic basket somewhere. Like that. <laughs> Chicks love that. Picnic. Anything, even if they plan just to stay home, whatever, I just a plan. My plan. To take think, control. I, That's right. I think you're putting the cart ahead of the horse. Though. I think it's the fact that a guy could be sort of brought to his knees by his desire for someone is a sign of weakness. Therefore, mm -hmm. uh, I like a strong guy. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, that's what the I'm guy, saying. Guy, anybody would, it's not just anybody would be a member of the club. I don't know. No, 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 I didn't say that. I said he's yeah. nervous because he's trying to please, or it seems as if he's nervous but, because yeah. he's, but, he's but, trying but, to please. But, Shut but, up. But a guy who doesn't uh, doesn't seem to care is like we're going to do what I want to do and I you're coming with me but, is attractive. But what's not attractive is not that he likes her a lot. It's that he's taken down by it yeah no no I, it is it's, i don't it's know that, i think it's both because it's it makes me think that they're not as strong in character as i need in a guy so, i like somebody who likes to to take care of me and and lead me like you were saying a girl will follow if a guy takes yeah, the lead i don't know there's a chicken and an egg thing yes, here but yeah there is e either way it's uh if he likes you too much at the beginning it's, it's yeah bad, no it's bad total turn off yeah yeah, now can a guy be real super confident and like you a ton? Or like at you the too beginning? much? And like you too if much. If there's yeah. if there's too much confidence though, that's also a turn off. If they're totally egotistical, then bye bye. Mm -hmm. See you later. Yeah, yeah. I just like myself a medium amount. <laughs> I mean, just for your, that's just what you do to yourself twice a day. I, I give myself a six, six and a half. Cassie's eighteen. Cassie. Hi. Hey. I have a question on HPV. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I have it. Okay. And. I was wondering, because they gave me the cream for the symptoms to go away. What it's symptoms are you having? The warts. You mean you, you, you have a lot of warts? No, not a lot. They, just a little bit, like four of them. You have a couple of them, and you want them to go away. What, what's the cream do? Aldera. Aldera cream, right? Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you put it on the warts? Yeah, it dissolves yeah. them, basically. It's yeah. like you it's put a, it's it off a, for three days. It's called a cytolytic drug. It prevents it from growing. Okay, so it dies off. but it will take. Well, it'll 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 get the ones that are on there. How mm -hmm. come you always mm -hmm. hear about them being frozen off or burned? It takes off them off. Where the Eldera takes a while. I mean, Eldera is one option now. It's only been available for a couple of years. So. Oh, okay. And uh, so, what's the question? Um, after the symptoms go away, is it still like? And if you have sex with someone and you have a condom on, can you still? Well, obviously, the condom will reduce the risk, but you can still produce virus and still be contagious. And I've been saying this a lot lately that the virus tends to stay around for about three to five years. Mm -hmm. Some of the viruses stay around permanently, and those are the ones that seems to really increase the risk for cervical cancer. cancer yeah. So in the meantime, for the next several years, whether you have warts or not, you've got to make sure you use a condom. The good news for you is that even if you give it to a guy, it doesn't harm him, but he then becomes infectious for other people. All right, well, good times, though, right, Because, Cassie? like, where I got them, mm -hmm. it was like I used the condom, but I guess they're around his, like, pubic hair area. Bad times. Yeah. And so I was wondering if I could give it to a guy through his pubic hair area, even if I don't have the symptoms. Yes, you can. Okay. But it's unlikely. Okay. I mean, it's not, I shouldn't say unlikely. You've reduced the risk substantially by um, wearing a condom. You've, uh, you've uh, eliminated any uh, litigation brought on by his people, <laughs> really, if you say. <laughs> you wore a condom. That's really what you're talking about. All right, Cassie. Because that's uh, what it comes down yeah. to. Yeah. And maybe they'll burn themselves out. <laughs> Most right. of them do. But it will, the Mo virus. Hold on. In most, most cases. Most? Most do. That's, uh, that's new. That's new. I, I got it here. Right. So it used to, people used to think warts were sort of a life sentence, yeah. right? Yeah, that's new. Now they're starting to think they're burning themselves out. Yeah, I've been saying that for about six months. Yeah, yeah. Glad yeah, but you heard me. You, no, listen, Wise As you were saying that <laughs> some strains, some yeah. strains, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not most. Right. It was just sort of some I'll strains. Say, I'll say most. Yeah. All right. Helen? Hello. You're 17? Yes, sir. What's up? Um, I wanted to talk to you. I'm a very reasonable person, so I'm not going to yell or do anything really trashy, but I wanted to talk to you guys concerning what you've been saying as of late and the fact that you seem to disregard the sensitivity that people have towards, like, the comments you make. Well, mostly, but go ahead. 
Um, like You're I'm a heroin addict. True, please. <laughs> Go ahead. I live on the East Coast, and uh, so I listened to your show last night, and your rant seems to be very charming, but um, the one about foreigners seemed to get on my nerves, and it seemed to pique interest in my household when you talk about, oh, blacks do this, and the Hispanics do that, and categorizing people, especially mm -hmm. in this day and age, I don't think well, it can get you anywhere, and it's not... Well, I mean, here's, here's the thing. Uh... I, you know, you walk a fine line. No one wants to be called uh, a racist, for instance. Right. But when I was talking about gas stations and their attendants in the L.A. area, they're 100% foreign. So it's it's hard to avoid that. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so there's certain, there's certain uh, jobs that, for instance, y you know, you want to be even-handed about everything. And I don't know how much the foreign part weighs into it, to tell you the truth, although I'm sure it's a factor. Not, not, not that they're uh, evil people, but that uh, culturally maybe they don't say hi, thanks, or come again from wherever they are. Okay. But uh, it is a factor. And, and there are certain things. I mean, there are certain groups that have bigger problems with certain things, and there are certain groups that are better at certain things, and I don't mind bringing it up. And I, I, know, I don't think that's racist. And I, I, I respect your right to do that, and I'm not calling you racist by any means, but I'm saying that, well, what's a shiv? Well, you keep on referring to if a, someone, you know, a black person casually comes up in a certain conversation, it's like, oh, well, I'm afraid that they're going to put a shiv in me. I have no idea what that is, and I don't think, I mean, what is that supposed to mean? I just want that clarified. There is no racial bigotry here. Uh, I, a shiv is like a, a prison no. knife. A knife, yeah. But, uh... I, I don't know. Because I'm a black person. Right, I'm but I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't say black people put a shiv in you. Uh, he says, people, he says people who are physically abused put shivs in other people. Yeah, but it's come up in a conversation, and I've listened to the show for about two, three years. I mean, oh I well, it, yeah, listen, there's no doubt I've said whatever about whoever all the time. <laughs> I, I'm not going to deny that. Give me your mother effing shoes. Yeah. Give me your shoes. See things. <laughs> that's uh, that's scared and, straight though. Okay, and um. You see, the scared straight. The reference of nigger coming up at one show, I think two shows ago. It was re very recent. I think Anderson dropped that in, though. Yeah, what was that whole con? You said it was oh, listen, out of I, Hey, Alan, who cares? I do. Well, good. <laughs> listen, I don't know. I'm not going to explain everything that, that I say on this show. That, yeah, All right? it's your show. If, I right. If that. you like it, I'm not, I'm not racist, and, but that doesn't... That, yeah, let me say this. I'm not racist, and that gives me free reign to bash on many, many races. Including what? including white. All right? Okay. All right. If you don't like it, fine. Okay. Don't listen. All right. All right. All right, here we go. Let me Jesus uh, Christ. Real with quick, the, that with was the blacks out, already. That was, was totally out of context. I dropped it, I dropped and it was and it made sense at the time and Yeah, I remember. But you were defend when you said that at the time, you were defending someone who called in and said that there was racism at a school. Right, Tris is getting bored here. All right. Back, to, back to the warp fires. Yeah. Uh, New England Journal of Medicine, November two thousand two. Human papillomavirus infection is a common sexually transmitted disease, Adam Common. Although most infections are benign, persistent infections is associated with development of cervical Oh, by the way, Boring. common doesn't mean anything. Okay, correct. but most, as I said, are benign. What does that mean? It, most they, will go most away? Will burn yeah. out? Yes. Most. Oh, now most. That's good. All right. Forget <laughs> them condoms. <laughs> All right. We've got to go to break. Trista, Trista is here uh, tonight. She is uh, the Bachelorette, of course, uh, this Wednesday, 8 o'clock on uh, ABC. They'll be uh, playing. Is it a two-hour finale? Yeah, two-hour, 8 to 10. Big two-hour finale. It's down to two guys. One of them will uh, be chosen. She, of course, can't say who it is tonight, but uh, I'm going to tickle her to get it out of her during <laughs> the break. <laughs> Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Trista is our guest tonight. She's the Bachelorette. The uh, big season finale is coming up this Wednesday at 8 o'clock on ABC. Big two-hour long special. Dr. Drew, big into Trista. I know it's tight. <laughs> but Trista, I think a little, a little more into no, the A-man because, because I'm rugged. You know what I mean? You're rugged. He's good around the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I am a physical Crafty. therapist, so the whole doctor thing. Yeah. That makes, oh, that's, that, yeah, that must make you crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> no, I like it. Yeah. And you ended up in like specifically in pediatric physical yeah. therapy? Mm -hmm. That was after you did physical therapy licensing, you did a no. subspecialization? No, I went to physical therapy school, got my master's, and then got my first job was in pediatrics. So you just 
became specialized there through on the job. Yeah, I, I, I did my clinicals, a couple of them in pediatrics, and where? that's why. Um, where did I do? Riley Hospital in Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. And at a couple different places, but it was very short term. But Miami Children's had a spot, and they only accept, I mean, they don't take really entry-level people all that often if mm-hmm. they don't have pediatric experience. But since I had this clinical experience, they thought, this, you know, we'll take a... Is this kids with chronic disabilities? or It's th- all all varieties. Um, I treated both outpatient and inpatient. I'd see post-op kids. I'd see cardiac kids. I went in the NICU. I, I saw um, syndromes and developmental delay, prematurity everything yep and now screw the kids you got to do corresponding for extra (laughs) no i really want to do something with kids after yeah whether it's volunteering or going back to their autographs on their way way to your mansion (laughs) i really want to have kids now listen drew Drew turned his back on uh the community and stomped on his hippocratic oath as well (laughs) it's all right you guys gonna make a buck let's uh (laughs) let's see kevin over here who's uh 13 has got a question for trista kevin hey adam Hey. Hey. Uh, well, before I start, I just want to say that you're my god and hero and all that. And, Thank you. That's always very scary to hear from a 13 year old. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and uh, I really look up to you and the things you do in life. Sure. And uh, people should respect you more because you worked hard to get where you are today. You're yeah, damn straight. Damn straight I did. <laughs> people should and, respect uh, him more. Huh? Yeah, people don't respect me enough, Drew. Really? <laughs> yeah. Everyone yeah, listen to Adam. Like where I come, come from. Drew with his silver yeah. spoon in his mouth. His daddy paying his way into school. Taking care of him, doing his homework for him. Not me. Yes, sir, Miss Grohl. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, anyway, so, w- and, and it's a real honor to talk to you. And yeah. yeah. Thank you for being a great person. <laughs> you still talking to me? Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> well, what's your question? One more thing. One more thing. No. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, all right, fine. Uh, well, my question is for Trista, and um, I just wanted to know uh, what qualities you like in Ryan better than Charlie. Mm-hmm. Um. What do I like in Ryan better than Charlie? Well. He is he is a, a painter and a poet, and I really like that he has that talent in him. And Charlie kind of painting didn't really do. do that. <laughs> um, he does that anima painting where they drink the, and then they. <laughs> you never seen that? That's, a, that's an anima painting. Oh no, it goes up. Yeah, oh goes yeah, up, sorry. Up. Oh, you're right. I got confused. I thought they just drink a gallon oh, no. of the sand. Hey, no, he true? just pa- he just paints for fun. Is he good? And he painted a picture for me. I thought it was pretty good. Oh really? Better than I could do. But it's not like professional. He doesn't do it. What is it with you, Sorry, what, do you what do you think? We just got, kind of got that together just for the show. Yeah, yeah. we just started painting. <laughs> put, 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 Better yet, <laughs> what do women care about this artistic craft? Like you guys you are know? whispering. <laughs> quiet. I think she's going to hear you. No, no. Don't Here, be silly. Here's what I'm saying. If the guy can't turn a buck doing it, okay. There you no, go. No, yeah. Just one more thing. Yeah, but for the show, we did it just to be able to make the whole, to fill out the whole. Let's get back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I... But you know, uh, <laughs> Are you going to talk uh, here, to me? Okay, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Okay. Here's my beef with the poetry. A guy who, who, who writes sort of mediocre poetry, mm-hmm. let's say, and I, I'm not saying your man does, but I mean, in okay. general, in general, a guy who just writes mediocre poetry, mm-hmm. and then there's uh, another guy who builds furniture or builds houses or something, the guy who writes the mediocre poetry is going to get way more credit for being artistic than the furniture builder. And that's what I don't like. I, I don't like that in women. And, and That's what I'm and saying. And I think as men, we don't trust the poetry. As, as men, we look yeah, at that yeah. guy and we go, pussy. No, not just pussy, but he's up to something. It, it, he's, he's up doing to something? something. Yeah. Well, if he's not, then we're really scared. <laughs> <laughs> then he's gay. Yeah, let's hope, he, let's hope is this is a plan good. to get some ass. Gay. Otherwise, we're in big trouble here, fellas. <laughs> that, that's what we think of. But and we sort of think of... If we wanted to do that, we could do that. This is the same with the performance art and uh, bad abstract painting. But, right. Uh, all right. But but uh, but our artistic thing is a good thing. That, you know, Drew it's sings. It's a good thing. I like it. Drew sings opera. I know. love singing. I leave, love singers, too. Yeah. 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 Nope. Switching over to me now, Adam. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> Jason? Yeah. Hey. You're 19. What's up? Yeah. Uh, I want to know. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Yep. You like singing, right? Every night under the balcony. Oh, no. With a baby grand rolled onto the lawn. <laughs> you come out in your negligee. Drew has a, has a candelabra on top of the baby grand. He's wearing a tux. When he hits the high note, 
or it's a high note. His uh, his vest curls up and rolls like a shade <laughs> under his neck. Yeah. You let your hair down. He grabs it and s- scales the lattice right up to the balcony and sweeps you into the bedroom. <laughs> Continues singing while he performs oral on you. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's talent. Yo, that's what I'm saying about the man. <laughs> <laughs> you have fun with that, don't you? I do. That's good. I do. That's nice. All right. Where were we? we oh, anyway, Trista, Trista had, a, uh, had an orgasm story that yeah, the yeah, crew gonna, was talking to me we're about. We're going to get to that. It's we are. On the, yeah, oh, okay. Jason. All right. Let's, uh, Jason? And Adam and Drew, you are my heroes. I just love you. Thanks, Jason. And so, uh, I am a big fan of the man show and crank kinkers. Thanks. Hi, you. Crank. Coming out with a new Crank Anchor CD. Ooh, uh, you gotta, this guy's got to be on a commercial for Crank Anchors. Crank Anchors will be <laughs> on uh, Comedy Central. The, the new season is going to start airing uh, the beginning of March. Well, I have got to see that. I am a big fan. Thank you. Well, if you uh, if you liked it last year, you're going to love it this season. I loved it this year. Bertram. Yeah, well, there's a lot of Bertram this year, so, so thank you. All right, what's your question? What are the long-term effects of ecstasy? Uh, you know, very l- limited exposure can cause an injury to the brain and actually destruction of certain areas, very much like the use of long-term amphetamine. Uh-huh. So the symptoms that people develop is panic attacks and depression and memory problems. And uh-huh. even 10, 20, even sometimes five hits of, a- of ecstasy can create this injury. Indeed. So it's quite serious. It's an area of the brain that gets, seems to be getting just... Uh, dissolved quite literally is, and is it reversible mm, uh, some of it is most of it is not oh hey jason what do you mean some yeah. of that the, some of the problems get better with time so oh, the, really? the, the theory is that maybe some of this is getting better but a, a lot of it they've been shown in monkeys that it, the injury itself persists for many many years mm-hmm. jason uh-huh what what's up with you you got a crazy voice you you have a, you have a crazy nationality or uh, Crazy no. size, or I'm half Mexican and half American. No, that ain't doing it. You wearing a retainer? Uh, yeah. There's what there it is. There you go. You wow. Get, you get that from wearing a retainer? Wow, you're good. He was like, yeah. th- th- he was like, he oh, was he? Was yeah, he clunky? He was, yeah, but that no, he was talking like he had a thick tongue, and that's the retainer makes you talk like that. Mm-hmm. And what? Take the retainer out and talk to us. <laughs> okay. Here you go. Take the wait, 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 wait. Now say cranky. Yeah, I had a question about it. <laughs> Say it again. Crank anchor. Yeah, see, it doesn't what? help, Drew. <laughs> I mean, Drew, it was great. The retainer thing was a great, great guess, but I don't think it made a, a big guess. difference. Well, I heard it. Well, you didn't know that he had a retainer, <laughs> did you? Just I heard fart. it. You heard you it, cl- it clank. No, I heard it, the thick tongue thing. He yeah, but now he sounds exactly the same without it. <laughs> Watch this. Hi, hey, hey, Jason. Yeah. I want you to quietly put the retainer in. <laughs> We're good. We're doing. We're doing uh, two out of three here, too, Drew. It's a great radio, J- Jason. Way. Don't put the phone near your mouth. I don't want to know if the retainer's in or out. All right. Okay. You either put it in or you put it out. Right. Don't even answer. Just nod your head. Yes. Yes. Oh no! I no, said nod, nod your head. head. Yes. There we go. Okay. Yes. Now. It's all right. We're gonna do two out of three. You just say crank yanker, or crank yankers. Yeah. Uh, when we come back, and you, you just tell me whether, you, don't tell me whether you have the retainer or not, but you remember yourself, okay? Okay. We'll see if Drew can tell. And it, it's, you, it's out now. I you can, can tell. You know, I can tell. Out. Okay. Just hold on. Hold on. All right. You ready? All right. It's out now. Just All quiet. Right. Quiet. Please, Drew. All right. All right. You ready? You say crank anchors. Go ahead. Crank anchors. Okay. In or out? Out. Out. Was it out? Yeah. Okay. Now, either put it out, leave it out again, or... Put it in or do whatever you want. We'll try it again. All right? Science. Uh-huh. All right, Jason? Uh-huh. All right, go ahead. Cranking. It's back. Oh, now it's in. Yeah. He had a trouble to cut. Yeah. I can't hear was, when he breathes. I can hear was it, that I hear in that struggle. time, Jason? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's crazy, but right. I, can, I can hear it when he's breathing. I can hear the uh, struggle. Yeah, you can hear it. All right, we're, we're going to do, do five out of nine. No. Let's, oh, sorry. my goodness. No, no, I'm kidding. Get an orgasm One call more time. Here. Let's go. All right. One more time. One more time. Are you ready? Come on, Jason. Would you shut up? Now get now get focused this time. Okay, I'm focused. I'm focused. I'm all focused. Okay, okay. you ready? Uh huh. Go ahead. Crank anchor. It was in, and he took it out when it said crank anchor. Just that I am a big fan of you. I oh. just love the bachelorette. 
right. You are so hot. How <laughs> Thank you? you very much. How old are you, baby? How old am I, baby? I'm 30. 30? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. All right. Shut up. <laughs> but Jason sounds hot, right? He sounds like a puppet. Picture the guy. He's a Craig Kinker's puppet. Looks like a marionette. He's uh, <laughs> he's 19. He's got a retainer. Thank you. <sighs> Not turning you on, right? Mm-mm. Yeah. You better... I got uh, a man anyway, so... Oh, you do? Yeah. Off the show. One of the guys, mm-hmm. right? Is it is it nice? Uh, I mean, the relief of sort of Finding not somebody. not having to. Well, I just mean not not having this going to bed with question marks running around your head every yeah. night. But we haven't been able to be together because yeah, it's a secret. You know, how long has it been since three uh, months? Three months. Yeah. So that's got to be tough. You get right up to that point where you finally right. make that decision. It's and, like cruel, but, you know. But, Here, you can have this guy, but no, you can't have him for three months. How much time do you have together? They give you a day? Six weeks. They give, oh, you mean f- not for the show. Yeah, I mean, after, you know, there comes a point in the show where you make the final decision. Right. And, and sometimes that involves, you know, getting engaged. So obviously, you'd want to be with the person. Right. Do they give you a week with the person before? They gave us um, four days after it ended. And then we had a couple rendezvous before the show started airing. Uh-huh. I see. But very, very, very secluded places, and and is that known? Does ABC have to be aware of that, or you, oh yeah, you know, they, all that they stuff? Knew it, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. And then once the show begins, there's no. It's a very difficult to do it once the so- show starts because now people knew him mm-hmm. because he could go to wherever we were going to go, right, and not be recognized. But I was recognized. Right. From the previous show. Yeah, from the previous show and right. from all the publicity from The Bachelorette. So so it was a little bit harder once the show started. Uh, and so then after this Wednesday, mm-hmm. it's uh, game on for you, too. Oh, yeah. We're going to be together on Wednesday night, two nights from now. And then you got a thing uh, coming up on Thursday? Thursday like is the rap- tell-all special. Yeah. How's that work? Um, Aaron and Helene are actually going to talk about what happened with them. Mm-hmm. Ooh. The Last Bachelor. Yeah. I'll tell you what happened with them. You put a pox on them. That's what happened. What? Yes, you cursed them. I did not. Me? Oh, wait a minute. That's Aaron. Oh, wait. That's Alex. That's the second one. No, oh, no. Yeah. Alex was the first one. Yeah. I'm like, what did I have to do with Aaron? Alex, you put a pox on, right? No. Yes. He's been dating for a year. They, I thought they broke up, Alex. They and, broke up like two weeks ago. Because you put a pox on no. them. You put a curse on I them. I didn't have anything and to do with it. Aaron, who's the second guy... Did He'll they, be talking about Helene, and then I'll be, um, Chris Harrison, the host of the show, will be talking to me and my chosen one. Aaron didn't work out either with his uh, They gal? just recently announced it. All right. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah. guys will see. Actually, you know, it You better get married because, to this guy. Well, it sucks because everyone compares the three of us on how we met the person that we're with. Yeah. And I think it needs to be compared on an individual basis. We're all separate relationships, even though we met in the same way. Yeah. So I think that it'll be interesting to see our relationship compared to Aaron and Helene's and Alex and Amanda's, because it's very different. And and, does, uh, and we know it's between two guys. we got to go to break. Uh, when we come back, though, I'm, I'm just curious if uh, whoever it is, it's one of the two guys, if they want to get into show business or move out here or do that or they just want to go back to their life we just want to go back to normal some kind of normalcy after the show ends we just we're going to travel a little bit we're going to take some time away from things how did either one of these guys live in la yeah charlie lives in hermosa beach oh i think we got our answer all right we'll uh (laughs) we'll take a break and we'll be right back What's up, this is Shavo from System of a Down, and you're listening to Adam and Drew on Loveline. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. Yeah, that's right. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Krista is our guest tonight. She is the bachelorette. She is uh, just as fetching in person <laughs> as she is on television. Why, thank you, Adam. And Adam yeah. is just fetching in person. <laughs> thank but, you. Uh, you're on the Tonight Show tomorrow night? Yep. And then GMA? Wednesday and okay. Thursday. Wednesday with my mom and Thursday with my guy. Oh, oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And you, you really do sound uh, genuinely excited about uh, being with your man. Two days. It's been three months. Very long three months. Yeah. So I'm pretty psyched. Yeah. To finally be able to say his name and not worry about spilling the beans and being sued for $5 million. Right. And just being able to hold his hand and walk around and do whatever we want mm. and not have people planning our 
lives. It's going to be nice. Yeah, and plus, you get right up to that uh, sort of that honeymoon part. I mean, you get you're you're with. I mean, you're with all those other guys. There's all these other distractions. There's yeah. cameras everywhere, and all. And then right at the point when you've just been dying to get the guy alone, you can't do it. But did you know this was the guy from the beginning? Yeah, that was about the asset. I can't answer that because I could possibly give it away. Mm. <laughs> mm. Did. Uh, were, were there when you when you saw what twenty how many 25. guys twenty five guys when when you just laid eyes on these twenty five guys did you did you have a pretty good idea initially who was going to make the cut yeah like right, right when away. you laid eyes on them well there were a few that I didn't know there were a few that for sure I was like okay he's great looking guy and Ryan and Charlie were both two of those guys that I thought that but there were also some that I was kind of on the fence about about. You know, I think they were good-looking guys, but I wanted to get to know their personalities. Mm. And there were some that I thought that were actually good-looking, and then the conversations we had were just not clicking. I felt like I was pulling teeth. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's what we'd be talking about. Don't trigger any dentist. I know. Don't trigger any dentist talk. Um, <laughs> 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 oh no! I oh, I want to have it. some conversation that feels like pulling teeth. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. I want to. I want to get to the. Uh, I want to get to the orgasm uh, all right, conversation. Yeah, we only have a couple minutes here. Were we going to have that? Do you want to take a call, take a gonna... call or what? Or just, Drew, yeah, you, take... yeah, you indicated that you had like a. Call I know it that's... dropped off. Let's try this one. Oh, it did. Yeah. Okay. Rachel. Hello. You're 20. Yes, I am. Oh wait a minute! Forget it. Let me ask you this. Trista, what about what about the guy who you ultimately you pick, mm -hmm. who's watching the show, he's seen you make out with or embrace, or I don't know what base you got to. I don't know. Did you have sex he with anybody? Knows, he knows everything that he happened. Does. He does. Yeah. Did you have sex with anybody? Well, I'm not going to say. All right. But she then, did yes. comment that she can but, only have, cannot have a orgasm during intercourse like most women. Well, that I confessed yeah. on the first show. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, right. and that she's become now the sort of poster child <laughs> yeah poster child for <laughs> anorgasmia and, and it's funny because correct me if i'm wrong but or give me a percentage um it's like 70 to 80 percent of women right not, oh, 110 percent in, his, in his world yeah <laughs> yeah but most women do not have orgasm with intercourse right ever right ever. see so i'm not abnormal you're normal now I'm completely normal. Yes. The fact that you can have an orgasm puts you in a nice, exactly. healthy pool. <gasps> I love Dr. Drew even more. Oh, listen, I could have told you that. Okay, I love Adam, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Yeah. Uh, no, oh, no, here on. goes Meg. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to uh, upset your uh, delicate sensibilities here. So, we'll try oh, to keep this okay. on the straight and narrow. But, okay. cannot have a, an orgasm through intercourse, which. Right. Really, I, I mean, I 70% doesn't sound high enough for me. Really? It, re it really it's doesn't. It's like 100% of women. It really doesn't sound high enough Well, for I me. don't understand how a woman can. Like, there, there is a small... Explain it to me, because, the, first of all, I've it, it heard is, that there's two different kinds. Uh, but, well, listen, that, women, that's, women that's can all. have orgasms driving a manual. Yeah. Totally, but that's know. clitoral. The, the two clitoral different kind thing is sort of BS. It's a women's magazine BS. Okay. The fact is there, there's sort of two different kinds of women. The okay. women that have them during intercourse, and they tend to not like oral sex. Right. And they tend to be multi-orgasmic. Okay. That's that version. Okay. Most women need direct clitoral stimulation. It's not with during intercourse. And they have, they, they have a refractory phase, and they have single orgasm, and they're satisfied afterwards, and that's uh -huh. that. That's most women. Okay. But now, so it's now, just, it's not vaginal to clitoral. It's just it's, during it's and just, not during. It really, it's, it's really two different. It's so, and then some people kind of sit on the fence. And sometimes they can have orgasms during intercourse, but really they're having clitoral orgasms. Okay. All right. And so but is there a vaginal orgasm? <laughs> the women will talk about it feeling slightly different when they have it during intercourse, but, but no kidding. You know what I mean? It's a right. different experience. But right. When people say vaginal orgasm, they're saying, I'm during having an orgasm during, during intercourse. intercourse. That's all they're talking about. Okay. Right. All right. So Because people were yeah. confused about that. I brought that up on the reunion show. I Someone know. asked me if I, I had know. experienced it yet. And I said no. And I said that there were two different kinds, and I have gotten so many questions about there being you know, two different kinds. And, and, and we get crap for not being able, because we're not women, we're not supposed to be able to talk about this. And uh, Berman and Berman, you know, the Berman sisters talk about right. this a lot, and they say the exact same thing we say. Do they? Yeah, exactly. Well, so anyway, we're down to oral. And uh, <laughs> that's... Are uh, we? Yeah, well, that, that's what <laughs> okay. it seems like. But, but women, you know, you, you can still enjoy intercourse. Yeah. It's just... Uh, it, uh, it's uh, about the intimacy for me. Yeah, women, right. women don't need an orgasm the way a man does to feel okay about the experience. Right. No, and plus, if they know that's uh, waiting at the end of the uh, 
penis rainbow that uh, they get themselves <laughs> some uh, intercourse and then then the nice bucket of gold. No, they don't need an organ. They, they no, have I, satisfaction I, without the organ. I, I know, but it's it's only and this is this may be your policy not to give a woman an orgasm, <laughs> but uh, it certainly isn't mine. It's not the way my father brought me up. <laughs> and you know, you do the intercourse for a while. And then uh, you finish you finish off with the with the oral sex, right? Lovely, sure. Yeah, it's a good combo. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Don't play stupid. That's the, that's the, that's, the, that's the order. That's the combo. That's the number two. That's what we would do. Okay. All right. All right. She said yes. You heard her, Drew. She said okay. Right. I got a special technique for the lady students. Oh, up. God, no. It's called the carpet, carpet bomb. Yeah. Oh, no. Nobody gets out of that village. All right. All right. I want to thank uh, Trista for coming in here. She's uh, just staying the first hour. It was uh, a delight to meet you. Thank you. And, and, and you as well. And I, w I want you to know that, you know, whenever we see anybody who's on television beside us, we decide to we figure out what's wrong with them. Right. But, but Trista, Fine. No, no, no problems mm -hmm. here. They seem uh, very well no. put together. Oh, also, somebody from reality television who can talk. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Who might have a brain. All right. The uh, Bachelorette, everybody, Wednesday, uh, 8 o'clock, ABC, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. That's my song. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. It's the love line. Trista has uh, left the studio. The, uh, what are those guys who hang out in front? What do I call those guys? Sploozers. Sploozers. Part spaz, all loser. You guys can uh, cut out now. You don't have to uh, hang out to get the pictures of uh, Trista anymore. She's uh, hit the road. She was a delight. She, now, we're, usually we're used to people coming off real, reality television and sort of not being able to talk, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, she yeah. seemed different than most of the people who come up with reality TV. She's going to be uh, 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 cut above the uh, average uh, reality show fair. Yeah. And yeah, she was cute. She's nice, friendly. Nice uh, nice to meet her. Not not a disappointment at all. <sighs> now i got to get to the dentist. Oh, here we go. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I had this big old, you know, they pulled my tooth. They pulled my tooth. Uh, they pulled my tooth. I, I, oh, I had the tooth. I had the root canal done on the tooth. Yeah. And then the root canal didn't, didn't take. Mm -hmm. It got infected. It didn't work. And that root canal was long and excruciating. And root canal feels like someone is putting a toothbrush up your ass for about an hour and a half. It is weird feeling. There's 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 pain and then there's sort of weird pain. Yeah. There's uh there's that sort of, you know, fluffy uh, pain. I, well, there's 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 two types of pain and I'm like you're talking a guy who's had his shoulder dislocated for more, you know, 3 or 4 days and knees dislocated. Many I've been punched in the face a thousand <laughs> times. That that's a different kind of pain. There's there's crawling inside of you pain, yeah, you know. Yeah. Visceral and, pain. Yeah, and it's when they're dealing with nerves and they're scraping things. Right. And the, the thing about the uh, the root canals, they're actually into the root. And they're scraping the root. And they're killing the root. Whatever you can feel it, and it didn't. And it didn't. Didn't take. So they had to pull. Then they put the cap on top of it, the crown, and it wouldn't come off. Oh. They, had to, they put this weird gum thing in your mouth, and you chomp down on it, and then you try to spread your mouth, and you try to pop it off. That goes on forever. And then next thing you know, a guy's got pliers. He's trying to dig out what he's put on top of, uh -huh. then he's redo it, then it's off to the specialist, and now the specialist has to redo it, then he redoes it, and it's more just exquisite cut-to-your-soul pain. And then, when that's all done, uh, it's like, well, now the tooth has to come out. And, you know, five, uh, that five grand later and uh, many hours logged. I could have been a goddamn pilot. The <laughs> amount of time I had logged in the dentist chair, if I'd logged it, and a co-pilot, I'd, I'd, I'd be captain at... at uh, United. Yeah, I was going to say TWA. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not around anyway. I, that's right. I'd be flying JetBlue right yeah. now. Yeah. All right. So now the tooth has to come out. So the tooth comes out. That's, of course, uh, another another ordeal. And uh, now it's time to put the new tooth in. And my thing is uh, just give me the bridge. Just give me the little fake tooth that snaps in between the other two yeah. teeth. I got, I got no problem with that. And he's like, no, nah, we better do the thing where we tamp the titanium bolt into your soul. That's what, that's what they, they anchor it to your soul. And I was like, I just give me. Then, then the other thing was is, 
I mean, let me ask you this, Drew. Yeah. Here's what I say to the dentist. Look, I don't want the thing. I've been living without this tooth for like uh, six months now. I like it. Yeah. I got no problem. It's like, well, your teeth will start moving around. Really? I'm going to really start like flying around inside my mouth? It's been six months. Haven't seen anything yet. And he's like, well, no, they'll start shifting. They'll start spreading out. So then I pointed out my lower teeth. Need a room. I said I could use a little room under here. Yeah. God bless them if they spread out a little bit. Well, it won't be the. Yeah, it's always like a little spurious. It's like it's sort of self-serving. Like, uh, when, when, uh, 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 it's, it, your teeth are going to start moving around, but the ones that do need the room aren't going to get it. Just the other one next to it is going to do it. But anyway, you got to you got to get this thing taken care of. So they do this one. So they get in your mouth. I'm in there. I'm lying down. They're doing the thing. And they always do this. They, they lay a little groundwork. All dentists do this. Dentists and mechanics do this. Opens the mouth. He's got the thing in there. He's got x-ray. He's poking around. Jeez, I don't like the way this number five by cuspid looks. Oh, boy. It's like, what? And I, I obviously, you can't be talking about the tooth that's missing, can you? No, no. no. But the one the one behind it, uh, is that giving you any trouble? That, and, and I said to the guy, I said, look, do you guys ever just do the goddamn tooth you're working on? Do we always have to get into the next tooth? We, we, we got to lay out the next tooth already? Like, emotionally, do you realize this is devastating? Do you understand, like, I understand there's other teeth, other other days, other troubles. Why do we got to start with that? We got to start with laying the groundwork for the next trip. I know, I'll finish this one. Just finish this yeah. one. You, I had to see, what, 12 minutes from now, you're going to be drilling into the bone of my jaw with a quarter-inch bit, okay? While, uh, while blood flows endlessly from, from my, from my fr- fractured gums. Really, do I got to get, do I got to, do I got to look down the road? Do I got to get in April now when I'm going to be back here again? Well, what is it? It's just... I'll take your word for it. Tell me afterward. That, it's just like, it's just endless. Like, I want you to, tell you what, once you catheterize me, give me a note, give, give, me, a, give me a Mac desktop, I'll just, I'll just live here. <laughs> you, you catheterize me, uh, give me some space sticks, some jerky, and some stream water. I'll just start emailing my jokes into Jimmy's show from here. You're right. See another tooth you don't like? Then we start with that crap. So anyway, it's like, yeah, I see something else I don't like. I'm like, so, okay, just relax, you know. <sighs> so they got the thing, and it's my biggest beef. And Drew, please, please, this is all I ever say to the guy. And the guy drives, everyone drives me nuts. But they clank at you. Oh, yeah. They got the sucker. And for the surgery, they don't use the plastic sucker. For the surgery, metal they one. use the metal sucker. And the metal sucker, and it's always operated by chicks, and chicks have bad high, hand-eye coordination. And it's just clank, 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 clank. They're just clanking your teeth with the metal. And uh, I know I seem like a prick prima donna here, but is there anything more annoying than having metal constantly making contact with your teeth in a clanking way? I mean, if you're eating and you, your four kids at once, your meal is screwed. But I, you mean you get, you get that uh, electrical feeling kind of? It, it's not so much the metallic thing. It's not the I'm chewing on yeah. foil thing. Right, right. It's the sort of... Your mouth is wide open, and someone is periodically just sort of oh. tapping your tooth with a hard metal object. Yeah, just annoying. clank, clank, yeah. clank. They got the mirror yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. When they're using the mirror, they sort of use the mirror to get things out of the way, get yeah. the gum out of the way. The sucker thing, the yeah. suction thing, well, obviously, when the guy's drilling through your gum, yeah. there's a, you know, you, you, you get hold of a bad fun in your mouth bleeds a bleeds for days. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. your gums are full of blood. Yeah. So, the, obviously, if they're drilling a hole in your literally three sixteenths bit almost a quarter inch bit going through your gum obviously there's going to be a fair amount of blood around there and they're having to sop it all up they're having to use the suction thing so the chick's got the thing she's just banging it from one tooth and banging it to the next and i say every goddamn time you can't make this stuff out of plastic you can't you can't do it every goddamn part in my car engine's made out of plastic you guys can't figure this out you can't figure it out you don't want to figure it out and here's the breakthrough. Here's the breakthrough. I swear to Christ, here's the breakthrough. They got uh, latex gloves that are grape flavored now. No. For the kids. Yeah, they're dusty. Oh, my God. They, they got, they got, she, she tells me this. I'm like, oh, just stop, stop with the novelty part of the dentistry. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. You got the grape flavored gloves. You got, you got the pina colada flavored pumice. You got all the bells and the whistles, but you still can't make anything out of goddamn plastic. And here's the point. You can. You can. You just don't want to do it. And I'm like, am I the only human being that doesn't like metal whacking against my teeth the entire time I'm in the chair? Oh, my God. 
brutal. Brutal. Well, anyway. Hey, good times. Uh, good times, yeah. Yeah, the guy did a good job. <laughs> I can see that. It was like a, it was like a uh, saucer in your in your jaw there. Oh, it was great. He showed me the X-ray. The X-ray is like uh, really out of a out of a comic book. It's like tooth, tooth, <laughs> screw, tooth, tooth. And really, the only bad experience about the whole thing, beside uh, having the hole drilled in my soul, was the constant banging and clanking with the suction thing against uh, all the other teeth, which again cannot be made out of plastic because why, Drew? Because they don't want to. Right. Because they, 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 they don't feel like it. They gave me the nitrous, but I can't... You can't breathe through your nose. Oh, that's the other thing uh, that makes me... And I was... Uh, i got to apologize to these people because I was riding them like mules the whole time. But <laughs> here's the thing. I, I'm doing the beginning of the procedure, and he's like, you getting high yet? You, you drifting off to la-la land? And I'm like, uh, no, I breathe through my mouth. I can't breathe through my nose. And when, when my mouth is wide open because you guys got two feet and a half a, half a train track in there... I can't breathe through my nose because my mouth is gaping open. So turn up the nitrous, please. And the guy's like, well, it's up. It's up. It's up real good. So I'm like, all right. Then about halfway into it, I'm like, listen, it, you really, you can't turn that nitrous up anymore? Because he goes, okay, I'll turn it up. And I was like, well, what about the part where I told you to turn it up? There? You don't believe me? And at the end, he was like, so how would that nitrous do? And I go, what happened? What experience? I, I didn't even know what happened over the last hour. And he goes, seriously? And I go, no, I was completely lucid throughout the entire procedure, and it sucked. Turn the goddamn nitrous up. What, what is that? It cost me 120 bucks. What is it about the part where the doctors don't want to get you high? And here's the other thing, too, that drives me insane, too. You come walking in the office like, did you take that pill? What pill? Remember the last time you took the pill? Made you feel better? Yeah. Did you take it this time? No. Why not? You didn't tell me to. Oh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the hell, Drew? What's up with you doctors? Don't want to get us effed up. <laughs> and let me say this. And then we're going back to the calls. I want a non-lightweight designation. You understand? For you. For me. Yeah. Because I come in there and they're like, did you bring someone? Did you drive yourself? Listen. I, 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 eight Percocets, a handful of Vicodin, and five Mickey's Big Mouths that drive better than you, bitch. <laughs> now, don't worry about me driving. Please don't worry about me driving. You're talking to the guy who, who uh, Drew, back me up here. I'm listening. Top-grade sleeping pills and five Bloody Marys, and I'm chatting Alec Baldwin up in the galley there, playing all the way back to uh, LAX, you, yes? You've driven me crazy on many a flight in that condition. Now, I'm impervious to drugs. Yes. I got a real high tolerance. So don't worry about getting me effed up on a little bit of nitrous. I did whole tanks of that crap in high school. Believe you me, I'm fine. I, I, here's what I want, Drew. I want the heavyweight designation on my medical charts. This guy's tough. This guy can take some drugs. Let's pump, pump it up, turn it up to 11 for this guy. I don't oh, want that crap my boy. mom gets. You know what I'm saying? It seems reasonable. My mom takes half a Tylenol and has a cap full of uh, Manischewitz, and she's, her clothes are off. She's dancing on the table. Not me. I don't want that. Wh where's my heavyweight designation, Drew? They have your blood type. They have what you're allergic to. What about the heavyweight part? You know when they have to decide, should, 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 he, get the, should he get the codeine? Should he get the, the tunnel with codeine or just a regular? Now, the heavyweights, we get the good stuff all the time, right? Yeah. All right, Drew, work on that, please. I, I don't want the lightweight designation anymore. I'm going to turn the goddamn nitrous on. Rachel? Hello. You're 20? Yeah. What's up? Um, I've been having a lot of problems with my boyfriend because he's kind of upset that we've been trying so many different things to get me to orgasm, and it hasn't been working. Before you go on, Rachel, I was just thinking, you know, we've taken two calls tonight. I want the heavyweight two. designation. Two. Thank you. <laughs> Right, Big H, right? Big red H, yeah, right yeah, on, heavy, right on the metal, right on the medical record. Go ahead, Rachel, keep going. Okay, so it's just been like a huge problem with us, and to the point where he's not even like wanting to have sex because he just gets frustrated. Hmm. He just, he really wants to please me, and it's just been real hard for us. And again, he doesn't understand that it could be a pleasing experience for you without. Yeah, an orgasm. and I'm trying to tell him that, and I can orgasm on my own, and actually we've played with some toys, and that works. But he just, he kind of has low self-esteem and feels insecure that he can't do it himself. You mean he wants to do it during intercourse? Um, any way he can, but we've tried to do it during intercourse when I'm like using a toy. That yeah, won't happen. But oral sex, no. No, uh-uh. Why not? 
I don't know. I've tried to relax. I've tried mm -hmm. about everything. I mean, it's not just him. I've had, you know, other boyfriends have had problems with that. I mean, it's just, it really matters to him a lot. And I tell him, you know, I'm still enjoying it, but mm -hmm. he's not. I don't know if there's anything else I can try. We've exhausted just about everything. I mean, there. Well, been patient. <laughs> well, you don't think it's him, though. I mean, you just no, think it's this not is you're cut out. You know, I don't think he's talking a big game, but he said he hasn't had problems with other, you know, right. women. And well, and you, you still enjoy having uh, intercourse with him? Oh, I love it. I mean, I want it all the time. It's great. I love it. I'm very attracted all to right. him. All right. All yeah. right. Well, then he needs to calm down. Then he needs this to is, calm down. This is his problem. You shouldn't worry about it. Yeah, it's just, it's so frustrating. Like, yeah, you get set yeah, up. But, but don't take it on. This is his thing. I and mean, it's... Yeah. yeah. He, needs to, he needs to get him to cut it out somehow. Okay. I'll just... Just tell I'll have them uh, listen to your show. Maybe that'll work. <laughs> Cut it out. That's ridiculous. That well, it's, it's ironically, it's that it's the insecurity about not giving you the orgasm that ends up pushing you apart rather than the not giving you the orgasm <laughs> right part. itself. Yeah. <sighs> I have to get that other test. heavyweight Adam. Heavyweight. Heavyweight. Is any? Am I the first guy to suggest this? Yeah. That I get the same stuff that the 110 pound Asian broad does, who's uh, never had an ounce of reefer in her life, or. Uh, Knows what it's like to do a beer bong. Yeah, well, we get the same stuff. Same stuff. That uh, that makes sense to everybody. That's that's everyone's plan, huh? Yeah. She can't drive. I can't drive. All that. Mm. I've logged millions of miles high and drunk. Millions. We'll be sure to tell Culver, my buddies at Culver PD. Here. Driven around the world a thousand times <laughs> high. A thousand times that's I've nice. ridden around the world. You know when Superman would go around? The world? Yeah, yeah. I've done that. I'm proud of you. Drunk and high. That's nice. That's right. Well, I'm still better than a bad driver. Who's uh, Ashley? sober? Yeah. yeah. Ashley, 13. you're 13. What's up? I'm going to call for um, 101 minutes on hold. Um, well, Good times. Okay. Me and my boyfriend, he's 16. Mm -hmm. And about a month ago, I lost my virginity to him. And today, we had off school. And so, we plan on him coming over. And we ended up having sex again. And my mom came home in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Now, what grade are you in? I'm in eighth grade. Eighth grade. And he's in what grade? He's a junior, but he's a young junior. He didn't turn 16 until, like, September. So he's in the 11th grade. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, see, here's the thing about uh, school. It's it, Age is out the window. It's it's sort of grades. That's true. For me. And 8th and 11th is a big difference. That's, that's, yeah. that's Huge uh, difference. That's pretty spanny. And then he's... I mean, when I was... Uh, Drew, could you? Well, you went to school at the Little Lord Front Lower School for Albino, Albino Hemophiliacs. All mm -hmm. had the same grades, but when I was going to high school over at uh, North Hollywood High, the idea of going back to Walter Reed Junior High to date someone would have been bizarre mm -hmm. to any of the high school guys. You know what I mean? No, would have been I, weird, I, unheard of. I mean, right? Yeah. Especially in the eleventh grade. So. But and then this is what but this is what happens. He's he's on his balls are on eleventh grade agenda, mm -hmm. and uh, you get dragged along with it. Any anyway, event, what happened with all this? Well, basically, my mom came in and she was too mad to even talk to us. Mm -hmm. She, of course, she made him get out and she went back to work. And what did she do? Did she physically catch you? Well, we heard her come in, so he like kind of ran into the bathroom. <laughs> And I was just there, and she, it was, I don't know. It so was she weird. walked, did she walk right into your room? Or? Yeah. And you had your clothes off? Yeah, I was under the covers, basically. And she walked in, and she said what? She basically was just like, what are you two thinking? It was just yelling. and. How did she know he was around at that point? He, well, because he can drive, and his truck was outside. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So his truck's outside, and and doesn't doesn't, doesn't he know you got to park down the street? <laughs> yeah, I, and he was par he was already paranoid, but I just kept telling him it was okay. And now I just I don't know how to act around my mom. Now. So now, what did your mom do? She talked to him. She said a few things to him outside when she was leaving for work, and he was leaving. I don't know what was said. Yeah. But then she came home from work, and you know she'd had hours to calm down because this was around like one or two o'clock. She didn't get home till six. Mm -hmm. And um, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but I, I couldn't even look at her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of conversation did, did you have? She was just basically telling me how disappointed she was in me and how she didn't understand why I would do this. And did she talk to you about birth control? Just about having sex, period. What, what are you using for birth control? Um, I used a condom. Mm. All right. And uh, so what's the question for us? 
just basically, I'm just, I'm so uncomfortable around my mom, and I don't know what to do now. I just feel I just don't know. We're not going to be able to take. I can't take, even look at her. Well, yeah. we're not going to be able to take that away from. Her. Thank. Hopefully, mm-hmm. she'll be able to kind of hang in and continue this dialogue, continue talking to you. This is sort of an opportunity for her really to kind of let you know how she feels about these things. And yeah, it's uncomfortable when it gets going, and it's uh, certainly an embarrassing situation. But God bless her. She's trying to. You know, really tell you how she feels about this, what she thinks is going to happen to you because of it, and where's your dad? Um, my parents got divorced when I was about seven, and he lives up in Ohio, like where I was born. Mm. And I only see him like maybe once a year. We don't talk. Well, just remind mom about that because that's where a lot of this is coming from. All right, all right. Listen, I, I don't. uh, Your boyfriend sounds like a. Not sounds like an all right guy, but he's he's in eleventh grade. Suspicious. You're in the eighth yeah. grade, and he's having yeah. driving his truck over to the house and having sex with an eighth grader. Uh, that's too young. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. You, can you not have any more sex for a while? Yeah, cause, I don't know. I guess it's just another thing is because it's like one thing after another with my mom now. Because oh, yeah. Like, well, when I was eleven, I was molested by my. Oh uh, boy. Yeah. And then back in November, I started cutting. Oh, uh, okay. And my mom found out, and it's just like one thing after another. Yeah, but okay. L- let me uh, let me give this speech uh, real quick, as uh, I feel I feel obligated to do it. These poor goddamn moms, mm. they marry these. Well, here's what they do: their dads are a holes. Yep. So they marry a holes. Yep. Now they go. Their dad was like, you know, abusing them, whether it be with booze or sexually or physically, then they hand them off to the abusive a-hole who promises to uh, the abuse same. them. Mm-hmm. That goes on for a while until the abuse gets too great. They naturally crank out a couple of kids because that's mm-hmm. what stupid people do. Then dad takes off, usually to Florida, yeah. and uh, spends the rest of his life there on a boat. Visiting, yeah, visiting the kid Seeing the holidays. kid twice a year and yeah. feeling remarkably good about himself. Yeah. Yeah. Remarkably good. Oh, he's a good dad. Yeah. Good dad. Love got my a, kids. Got a good girl. Loves the kids. Send him a novelty size uh, stuffed panda bear just the other month. Come on. That's got to be worth something. And uh, then he goes there and lives sort of scot-free and uh, rent-free on some uh, boat in Florida while his uh, kid just gets uh, passed around like a joint at a Doobie Brothers concert. Right. Just uh, acting out, whatever. Then they get into it with mom. Yeah, and mom, teenage yeah. girls cannot stand their moms. As a matter of fact... I don't know who teenage girls can stand. But they especially can't stand their moms. Yes, but my, my sister did not like my mom. Mm-hmm. She didn't like my stepmom. She didn't like my dad. She didn't like my stepdad. She didn't like uh, she didn't like the Culligan man. Yeah. She didn't like anybody who got near the house. She's like antisocial types, though. She's like Jim Morrison. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. She yeah. liked other screwed-up teens, yeah. but she didn't like anybody who was in any position of any right. kind of authority whatsoever. Right. And, and just never stopped acting out. But especially taking it out on mom. Yeah. <clears throat> and now, the, the more the mom pulls her weight and taking care of the kid, the more the mom gets abused. Too. Right. So meanwhile, the guy's living in Florida on a fishing boat. He's having a, he's having a good old time out in the sun. His his daughter is is turning this guy into a Shea, yeah. the uh, slain uh, Cuban, no, Mexican, yeah. no, Cuban uh, yeah. rebel. And uh, meanwhile, mom is the uh, wicked witch of the north. And all she's trying to do is keep the kid in school, keep the bills paid, and yep. go to and balance that with her work, right? Absolutely. She get endless amounts of crap. Listen, all you screwball daughters out there, you got a problem with your no-count asshole dads. That's what the problem. Those is. are the guys you should hate. And your granddad. And your granddad who did whatever to mom. Mm-hmm. Now cut your mom some goddamn slack, would you please? These women are trying. Here, here. They got dumped. They're lonely. Now all they got is. Go to work and then come home to your bratty ass. Who wants to get another nipple piercing? You, you got to be pissed at someone. Be pissed at your dad. Leave your mom alone. There you go. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That's uh, Doctor Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Listen, I know we haven't taken a call tonight. Drew, None. But listen. I have four. Four calls. Okay, but listen. Your teeth. I want to get back on to this heavyweight versus yeah, yeah, lightweight okay. thing. Producer Ann brought up a good point out in the hall. I think you're having seizures tonight. What you, I'm just a little fired up yeah, lately, that's right. all. I want the heavyweight designation on my driver's license. Just like right next to the donor sticker. Well, we're, we're, you said we're out there in the hall we developed the bull taco pylon test, right? We yeah. Ride the, a mini bike through some uh, pylons, pylons yeah. after a six pack in the yeah, parking lot. Yeah, yeah. But here, Tall boys? Here's a, yeah, yeah, here's what I want to know seriously, Drew. 
Okay. <laughs> would you agree? Seriously. Okay, but oh, hold on a second. All right. Wait, would you agree to this? I'm agreeing to the whole. You're heavyweight. You're a heavyweight. Well, let's no. No, I forget agree. about me. Forget I'm gonna, about I'm gonna, me. I'm gonna go create a designation for you. I'm forget about me. Stamp. Forget about me. Let's just look at it this way. Somebody is six uh, two and they're 190 pounds, and you take 10 guys that are six yeah. two and 190 right. pounds, and you give all 10 of those guys five one ounce shots of vodka within a half hour period. Mm -hmm. Could you agree that? Those ten guys may act differently yes. or have different degrees of intoxication. In, in fact, in fact, sons of alcoholic fathers have been proven to, I'm in be, that group. to be resistant to the intoxicating effects of alcohol. Or, listen, let's face it. Anyone has five shots of vodka, they feel it, but there is a wide margin the, of how it affects the you. Guy, the males who can drink their friends under the table... Is a marker for alcoholism. Right. Those are the ones with the gene. God bless them. So here's my point, Drew. Uh, but in the eyes of the law, <laughs> these six two hundred and ninety pound guys, all ten of them that all consume the same amount of vodka in the same time, yep. would all be po over the legal limit of point oh whatever. Yep. But if one group or one person had the ability not to feel the intoxicating effects of those of that alcohol then wouldn't that make a huge difference in the way they operated a car, for instance? Yes, so we should have the heavyweight uh, range. And we should have the lightweight range, uh -huh. because .08 is too high for my mom. <laughs> I mean, my mom has a glass of champagne, and, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't let her, I wouldn't let her uh, drive a, uh, a moped to get the mail. Yeah. She's dangerous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, once we figure this out, then couldn't we get that on my license, and then when I got pulled over... And I blow uh, point uh, one five, I'm still fine. Yep. And couldn't I use this in court if I ever got pulled over? Ooh, that's interesting. I think I could. I could why, argue. Why not? Why not? I could argue that point oh eight is some sort of random arbitrary number. Yep. And while that, just like a hundred pounds would be too much for a lot of guys to lift off the ground with injuring himself, not a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Yep, it just yep. should be a higher mark for him. You're He's right. stronger. You're right. And if I can prove that I can get to .08 and be more functional or pass whatever the test is that involves whatever, then how come I got to pay? Yep. I think you're right. Thank you, Drew. Thank you very much. You're a heavyweight. I want it on my license, Drew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really want to work on this. Robert? Yeah. <clears throat> you're 18. Yes, I am. What's up? Uh, yesterday, I went out just on the spur of a moment with uh, one of my friends, and I got my tongue pierced. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, my three roommates, they all think that is one of the gayest things in the entire world. Well, it's a little fruity for a guy, but who cares? But not super gay. Not super gay. It's not, I don't even look at it as gay, really. I just look at it as sort of weird. Energy, yeah. It's the energy. Yeah. The n nipple, nipple ring worse. Actually, nipple ring is just weird, too. Mm -hmm. Two earrings, gay. Mm -hmm. yeah, in the ears. Yeah. Earrings in the ears? No, I don't have yeah. any. The tongue's the first one. All right. All right. Well, there you go. Good times. Make sure you take care of it properly. Do all the mouthwashes and stuff. It's those not, not going to affect your career as an auctioneer? Those things get infected, and uh, there have been now cases of brain abscesses from the tongue. Oh. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Enjoy. <laughs> Mr. Personality. People are quick tonight. Yeah. Uh, uh, James, 21. Hey, what's going on? Uh, how are you doing, Adam? Oh, my mouth hurts because I have a .2 hey, uh, slug in my jaw. I don't know that .08 thing. I once got a DUI with a .03. You did? Yeah, well, little zero tolerance. I wasn't 21. Oh. Mm. Which brings me to my question. Hmm. You hear funny things in jail, right? Mm, well, sure, yeah. I heard fun. something. This is kind of a... You know, Adam, you're cool and whatnot, but this is something that I think you're probably going to get a kick out of. My question is, can you really give a girl, um, like, an instant orgasm by shocking her with a battery? No. No? No. So it's kind of like that little 9-volt thing. You put it to your tongue and it tickles, so it wouldn't tickle a girl anymore if you... It might tickle her, but that's not how orgasm is achieved. If you, if you gave it to her downstairs, you mean? Well, what would happen if they put it on your penis? I don't put it on my penis. All right, but just what if? The same, in, the, the, the clitoris and penis are the same basic. Well, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying is my penis isn't wet, you know, and. Right. 
Neither is the clitoris necessarily. Well, well, the, the, let's say the vagina does get wet. Yeah. Would it conduct it that way? I don't know. It tickles your tongue, don't it? Yeah. I'm asking Dr. Drew. Maybe it will conduct it. Well, it's, uh, well, the soft tissues. Well, here, here's what I'm saying. You take that. Have you taken the 9 volt, put it on your tongue before? No. Really? Yeah. Really never done that. Yeah. Sh show hands. Who's put the 9 volt uh, on the tongue? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. We you got about half, two, half the peanut gallery to has. Two. Huh? Right? You have to have two. Uh, you have a current. You have to have no. positive and negative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, 9 volt has it on the same oh, end of the battery. I see. And so when you press it on your tongue, I guess uh, your your tongue is a sort of a conductor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wet, and mm -hmm. the current goes between the negative and the positive side. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't do it if you put it on your forearm, but if you put it on your tongue, it's a way you can tell if the battery has any juice in it. Mm -hmm. Boy, Drew, I, I'd like to write a book about the things you haven't done. I know. It's, it's, it's sad. People write books about things they have done, <laughs> but I'd like to write a book about the things Drew has done. It'd be about, about 1,100 pages or yeah, so. Yeah, it would. Big almanac. Boom. Epic. <laughs> we did dedicate the first 750 pages of the movies you hadn't seen. <laughs> um, so you put your tongue uh, on the thing, and you get the buzz. Now, if you put that thing on your vagina, it's sort of mucosal mm -hmm. down there, right? Mm -hmm. It probably would conduct something, right? I, I think moist. your penis would, too. Well, no, but your penis is not moist. It you just have to be closer to, together. It just wouldn't conduct as far. No, I, it needs the actual moisture. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's the, it conducts better. Well, it not only does it conduct better, it just conducts, period. It's a sort of like getting a shock... Uh, okay. You know, there, there's that's the way it travels. Is the moisture would not work on your on your nose or your forehead no, at all. Not sufficient current. Right. Yeah, it's not doesn't feel like anything. Hmm. All right. Uh, so we could try that on the vagina, sure. Okay. But be that as it may, that is not what triggers an orgasm in female. I yeah. mean, the, the, running a current across the clitoris. No. Figure most no. things uh, you hear in prison. It's a suspect. Good good choice of words there, Drew. Taylor. Yes. You're 21? Taylor's, Taylor is a heavyweight. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah, I need that, too. But are you that way with marijuana also, Adam? Uh, no, he's lightweight. Complete. I get I, I get pretty good and stoned pretty easily. Okay, why can't I? I don't know. Like, I probably the fewest amount of hits that I've gotten high off is probably 20. Oh, oh, and and you know what? By the way, Taylor. Yeah. When I get my designation for the uh, for my uh, heavyweight on the license. Yeah. It has a little booze bottle. <laughs> has a little pill, a little Joy. prescription pill. But it'll, but the bong will have an X in front of it. Like this guy's not a bong. He's not a pot heavyweight. Well, you don't have to have the X. You just have the little insignias there for the ones that you you are heavyweight for. Yeah, you get the you get the stamp. Yeah. Yeah, I've earned my merit badge and prescription drugs yeah, and pills, booze. Yeah, pills and drugs. <laughs> right, but I don't have the pot one. So so technically, if I get pulled over and I'm stoned, I'm just like one of one of you guys. Mm -hmm. I don't have the heavyweight designation for that. To be fair, Drew. Yeah, well. Yeah. Okay. It's 20 hits before you get yeah, high. And I've been smoking probably for about a year and about, oh, probably two months ago, pretty much cannot get high at all. What's a pot brownie do? Do you ever eat a pot brownie? Yes. In fact, actually, I make pills. You make pot Basically, pills? Yes. For what? Basically the same thing, huh? Do you like pot? When I can get it to work. Well, why, why, why are you so hell-bent yeah. on getting pot to work when it doesn't seem to be your, your, your drug? Thing, right. I don't know, because when I do get it to work, I really like it. Hmm. But um, it takes a lot of effort. and I, I know, but... I, it, doesn't it, isn't it supposed to have a reverse... Hold on, quiet down. True, this is a little sort of suspect to you that she seems to be working so hard for yeah. the pot. Yeah. Now, either she's overstating it, or she's got a problem. Yeah. Or she's trying to keep up with somebody or something, you know. Well, she's making pot pills. I mean, I, well, again, where, you know, why all the energy? Right. Taylor? Okay, first tell me why it's not working, though. Because pot is a neuromodulatory substance, mm -hmm. and it is very different person to person. Some people get these tremendous euphorias, and that's all they can think about for many years to come. Other people get panic attacks and paranoid and don't really get much. And some people get, like you, not much in either direction. And why would it have stopped working all of a sudden? It tends, to, as time goes along, the positive effects tend to go away. Really? Yeah, it gets, it gets more difficult to get yeah, high power. You've, you've done away. enough. You've done so much of it, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot. Tell me about your pot pills that you make. Hey, what about them? 
She's a Mormon too. Maybe she's sort of had a score to. What do I got? What do I got? Answer with. Uh, we got to do five goddamn rounds of questions or anything. Tell me about the pot pills that you make. What about them? I don't know. Tell me about them. Like how they work or how I make them. Whatever. Um, I'm. It's basically the same as a pot brownie. Right. All right. Yeah, I know how they you work. Just, I'm doing the math on how they work, but how how do you make them? Um, you just grind up the pot into a fine powder and um, mix it with the oil, hot oil, and it bonds to the oil or whatever, and then you just let it cool and pack it into gel packs. Into yeah. gel packs. So now, yeah. and and what would one pill be the equivalent of, like a joint or something? Like how much pot could you get into one pill? Hmm. Well, how I, high would one pill get the average person? Well, um, pretty high. And mm. I have, I had a, two friends who both took one pill. One of them made them really high. One of them, um, it was too much and she was sick all day long. Yeah. And so. I can take up to like eight pills easily. Eight pills. Yeah. And why, why, so pill form, just because it's easier, you can take it with you? Because it was taking too much for me to smoke it. I was worried about my lungs. I was. All right. You know. All right. So you're running up eating pot. All right. And why don't you just forget about this pot altogether? Because you're making pot pills. That doesn't worry you at all? Doesn't strike you as like maybe you got a problem at a certain point? Mm, no. I mean, I mean here, here's, here's what I'm saying. I like my booze. I like my booze plenty. But if I got home and I was out of booze... I'd I'd probably go to bed. I wouldn't I wouldn't start drinking fingernail polish. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yes. This is sort of the equivalent to that. Are you taking other substances other than pot? Uh, just alcohol. Yeah. How does that affect you? Um, I have a really high tolerance for alcohol, also, but. Yeah. Do you have alcoholism in your family? Sure. No. Oh come on. You gotta have something. You're making pot it's pills not for Christ's sake. I know of. Yeah. And I I no. All right. So what do you do for a living? Um, I'm in school right now. Are your parents Mormon? Mm, my grandparents are. Okay, so that's why they don't touch alcohol, right? Well, what about her right. parents? That, that is true. There could be alcoholism because yeah, yes. they don't, yeah, my parents drink though, and they're not alcoholic. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. What are you? Junior college? No. No. You know what? I don't get junior college because you're making pills. You're a little. Ph you're like a ph pharmacist for Christ's sake. <laughs> All right. Listen. You. You, you know what? Uh, Here's what it is, Taylor, and uh, then we got to go because, okay. you know, i got to complain more about my mouth. Mm. Uh, and Drew, stop me if you disagree with any of this. Yeah. Taylor, you sound like a smart person. You, you sound like you have a high IQ and you sound like an intelligent person. Uh, sometimes that works against you because you're able to rationalize things. You're intelligent enough to sort of um, work around what could be a burgeoning addiction here. Yeah, you're That's what it sounds like to me. yourself intellectually there's no problem. And in fact, there's a real serious issue right. going on. There is a definite momentum when you're making pot pills, and it's just something you need to start looking into. I don't know why it is you don't get as high as other people. It's very random that way. Some people have orgasms. Some people don't. Some people, you know, burn when they go in the sun, and some people tan, and case, some people get high, and some people don't. Yeah, it has to do with the number of receptors and how your brain, brain responds. Did they have antidepressants right. affect pot at all? Mm, no, it more just makes the antidepressants not work. All right. Okay. So look in all this stuff and uh, start uh, using your powerful mind for good instead of evil. <laughs> okay, thank all right. you. All right. Bye. Good times. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm uh, it's, uh, Dr. Drew, Queens of Stone Age in the background there. All right. Home stretch here, buddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, get to the phones. Steve, you're 19. Yeah. Hello. Hey, hello. Uh, my first, girlfriend... First clear I'm caller we've had in a week. In, you in what? The phone. Yeah. Although I'm not sure how to lose it, Steve. Is, but mm -hmm. go ahead, Steve. Um, me and my girlfriend have been having sex for about two years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, she still wants to have just two main positions. Either me on top or her, you know? And I was wondering if he had any suggestions. Those are the two main positions, aren't they? <laughs> I'd say her on, yeah. Yeah, those are the two, the two main ones. Cowgirl girl or, or um, missionary. Sounds about right. I guess there are three main positions. They have to add doggy yeah. to that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's about, everything else is just variation on those themes. 
Seems like it, yeah. yeah. So you're two thirds of the way there. Right. Right, right. I'd like her to try doggy style and all that, but she doesn't really want to, I don't guess, or is she scared to or something? Really? She doesn't really want to, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. How scary could it be? Well, oh, right. I, I mean, I don't know if she's scared or not. It, it's sort of academic because she doesn't want to. But um, have you, I, I guess I guess my question is, is, you know, when you're having sex, if somebody's sort of losing themselves in the moment and really caught up into it, then you just sort of fluid, you become very fluid. You move around in different positions mm -hmm. and everything's, everything's open. Right. Uh, if, if people are real conscious of what they are, what they're doing and where they are, mm. uh, then, it, then, then, then the position shift becomes much more awkward and, mm -hmm. and cumbersome. So maybe she's not really into it. How old is she? Uh, she's 18. Mm. Mm -hmm. it is, uh, she seemed to be enjoying herself? Uh, yeah, seems to be. I mean, she gets off all right and all that. Mm -hmm. Every uh, time? Do what? Does she get off every time? Uh, not every time. All right. Uh, no, I believe it. Most of the time, it. no. Most, most of the time, time. Yeah. Through, uh, through intercourse? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. But, um, well, she, said, she also yeah. told me that, uh, her stepdad had molested her. So, uh, I don't Maybe know if that's that where, cause yeah, that, that's sure. Yeah. Nah. Sure. No, why nah, should I can see why that would do that. <laughs> yes, of course, Steve, that's where the deal is. I, give her a break. <laughs> you know, I was thinking this, uh, the, uh, oh, by the way, stepdad yeah. had sex or that kind of thing. It's yeah. like, sort of, uh, it's, it's sort of like telling the mechanic, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm hearing a little noise come from the engine. And he's like going, well, how many miles you got? 10,000. Hmm. Change your oil? Ma maintain the car? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you ever do you abuse it? Do you warm up that? Warm it up? Never drive it faster <laughs> in operating temperatures? Blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, it's like, oh, uh, by the way, I unscrewed the oil filler cap and dumped a whole bunch of ball bearings <laughs> in there. Watering. Yeah, and I, I took a dump uh, <laughs> through, the, through the cap and the valve cover. And then uh, then I put a bunch of mixture sand and uh, metal shavings mm -hmm. in there. Good time. Uh, then an M80. <laughs> and then I put the cap back on. Uh, to the M80s tonight. Other that's than what that, your mouth feels like. That's what my mouth feels like. I keep thinking of like, I think of an M80 went off in my mouth. That's oh uh, my god. Yeah. So the the molestation thing, as far as the it's positions, a big, deal. big deal. And the and some of it may just be directly connected. Like stepdad may have done that done, a, position. done a certain yeah. amount of positions. Yeah. And listen, stepdads. Uh, you know, I I can't say that I condone uh, you having sex with your underage uh, wards, but if you're gonna do the missionary, you know what I'm saying, Drew? If you're gonna X one out, yeah, then they X that one out. Now you got nothing but uh, now you're left with like wheelbarrow and a uh, reverse cowgirl. You're sitting in the catbird seat. Okay, tell her, it's Steve. She's gotta get some therapy she needs for to get this. Some help with that. Absolutely, Connie. Yeah. You're 14. Yeah. What's up? Well, I've been dating my boyfriend for about a month and a half, and, well, my friends keep asking me, you know, if we've had oral sex and stuff, and, well, I would say no, we don't, because it's true. And, well, I was just wondering if that was weird or something, because, I don't know, he's never asked me for it or anything. No, count your blessings. That's fine. <laughs> You're 14? Yeah. And he's how old? 16. And who was asking you about it? My friends. Your friends. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's all yeah. good. Did you want to get moral sex? Well, I don't know. I'm curious, but I don't yeah, know. Man, just relax. Take your time. No hurry. Yeah, you're 14. And what? What? Uh, what's the big curiosity? Yeah. Like, I've never blown a guy, <laughs> and I can tell what I know about what that would be like. Yeah. I think if and when I blow a guy, I'm gonna be thinking, "Yep, that's it. That's exactly. That's exactly what I thought it would be." You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, the cure. I, I guess the curiosity part. Uh, I, you, I guess you know, it, that's BS. That whole thing of curiosity is something that our culture again has created about young people. A certain percentage of young people are what are called novelty seekers. Mm -hmm. They're not curious. They need thrill. They need novelty. Right. And they need to keep pushing the envelope and the, the sports and the drugs and the mm -hmm. sex. And this mm -hmm. is that. This is novelty seeking. Mm -hmm. And you find alcoholic history in those situations usually. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the Vicodin and the booze uh, tonight, Drew? Heavyweight. Said? Heavyweight. Yeah, is that bad for the liver? Not if you're heavyweight. Vicodin and the booze? Not if you're heavyweight. Not bad for the liver? Not if you're heavyweight. Well, 
Let's face Everyone it. Everyone else, bad news. The, no, tylenol I'm, I'm, and the Tylenol and the alcohol could shut your liver down, absolutely. Because I'm looking at... I'm looking to hop on uh, that Vicodin train with a couple of boozes. Is that uh, mm, how much Vicodin are you digging? I don't know. I can see what I can scrounge up. Just take one. One, a couple, a couple of boozes, be no problem. No, no. I'd probably just stick with the booze. I don't yeah, know don't drive the too fast afterwards. No, no, I'll be, I'll be sober until, until the moment I get home. Hmm. Kimberly. Yes. You're 27. Yes. What's up? Um, hey, um, I just uh, had a um. A significant emotional event um, a couple nights ago with my mother, who had abused me as a child, and um, physically abused. Y- yes, emotionally mm-hmm. abused. Mm-hmm. Uh, thing else. And um, in my conversation with her, I, I just called her up and totally not expecting to confront issues like this. But uh, one conversation went to another to where um, I, I I ended up asking her um, questions about my past and the abuse and we talked about it and the outcome is nothing I, I ever I never even expected to confront her about this in fact I was the only one having a relationship of my other two siblings here um, and I was the most abused by her right. what, what kind of abuse just emotional physical physical emotional abuse um, okay, can we unfortunately have, like, have to go what, what can we do to help tonight I'm just okay I just you know, it's like I confronted the issue, and I got the response that, you know, I guess any response would have been bad, just to know that she didn't think it was, or that what she had done was wrong, and now I had gone through the therapy, and the, the, I had those coping t- tools to, through that point, but now I... All right, all right, hold on. Let's see if we can get her back tomorrow night. We just yeah, don't have time. we got to talk to her tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, accusing or confronting your abuser... Doesn't do crap. Never... No. Oh, is it... Always leaves you feeling worse. Yeah. Don't know why. Society has you talked into. This is yeah. going to cure you. No. Never does. We'll be back. Well, that's the show, everybody. I'm going to go home and uh, hit the bottle. And the pills. Yeah. No the pills. No, I'll look for the pills. Uh, so I don't know if I can find them. All right. All right. I want to thank Diamond Limo for bringing Trista in tonight from uh, The Bachelor. Diamond Limo. Bachelorette. The Bachelorette. That's right. And from The Bachelor. That's true. All right. So, again, uh, props to uh, Diamond Limo for doing that. And uh, thanks to Trista for coming Any in. guest this week. And we're going to have uh, the Vandals in uh, on Wednesday night, so we could talk to those guys. Until next time, Santa Corolla for Dr. Drew saying... Mahalo. Yeah, I'm there, you chist. You don't worry. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.